church in Shropshire has historically been the centre of the very important Cheshire cheese industry. The climate and the soil type around here are excellent for grass growing and not well suited to arable crops. So it has become the centre of Britain's dairy production. It's thought that the Romans may have introduced cheese making to this area and Cheshire cheese is certainly mentioned in Doomsday. The massive growth of the Cheshire cheese industry was linked to the Industrial Revolution, as former cheese producer Jill Hutchinson Smith explains. The Industrial Revolution, which was the middle of the 19th century, 1820-1830, many people moved into Manchester, Birmingham. The great conurbations where the factories were, and of course the townspeople needed feeding. And so there was a huge change in farming practice in that cheese was made and then sent to the towns and the whole industry expanded hugely so that within um, no distance of here there were 800 to 1,000 farmers making cheese on their farms because there was no factory cheese making at that time. By the end of the 18th century, the line of the Ellesmere Canal had been rerouted through Whitchurch specifically to carry cheese into the cities. Special cheese boats called flyboats with slender, graceful lines for speed were drawn by horses that were changed every few miles to maintain that speed 24 hours a day. They worked around the clock. They ran to a strict timetable and cheese loaded in Whitchurch in the morning would be delivered to market in Manchester the following morning. Saturn is a surviving boat from that era beautifully restored. In 2009, pupils from Sir John Talbot's school in Whitchurch re-enacted the loading of a token cargo of cheese from a wharf near the town. Pupils found out that the flyboat never stops, so even meals have to be taken on the fly. Later, cheese was transported by train and eventually by lorry. Drivers, a Yorkshire cheese buyer, even chartered a special train every Christmas to collect Cheshire cheese from Whitchurch. Cheese was bought and sold at cheese fairs, of which Whitchurch was the biggest, held every three weeks on a Wednesday. Jill Hutchinson-Smith remembers it well. So the, our cheese were loaded onto a horse and cart and on a Tuesday afternoon and taken into Whitchurch. And I remember as a child that all the horses and carts queuing along Church Street and down St Mary Street to be offloaded into what is now the Civic Centre but was the Town Hall. And there was a big set of scales and the cheese were taken off the horse and cart and put on the scales and Mr Cooper was the scale keeper and I was rather in, in awe of Mr Cooper but the scales were beautifully polished and he used to weigh the cheese and then the cheese were laid out on straw on the market hall floor in rows and it was called pitching so your pitch of cheese was laid out and you always had your same place, mother always had her same place in the in, on the market hall floor and on a Wednesday morning the fair, the cheese fair opened 
and you hoped that there would be somebody come and buy your cheese. And the buyers of cheese at that time were called factors. But then the cheese factor would come and iron your cheese with an iron, that's an old iron, with a, take a core out of the cheese, take a core out of the cheese and see whether the cheese is of quality or not. And if he liked the cheese, he would give mother threepence halfpenny a pound. In the bad times, she would come home from the cheese fair in tears because she had to sell her cheese and she had to send the horse and cart back to, f um, to take the cheese back to the farm to keep it for another three weeks. One of those cheese factors and, was um, Dennis Biggins. My father went into cheese factory after he'd served in the war in 1914-18 and he, um, he uh, when he came out, he became a cheese factor. Now, um, I don't know whether you know, but all the cheese factors, a lot of them, lived up Chester Road. And um, Fish lived at the Hollies, Blackshaws lived at the Elms, uh, Bambas lived at the Fairfield, McCunthus lived at the Cottage. Oh yes, and um, what's his name? E.P. Norton lived at the Mount. Nice. When you say Cheshire cheese, the, you think about Cheshire cheese as a commodity. In actual fact, it varied enormously. And part of the, uh, the reason why they needed cheese factors was to distribute this enormous quantity of cheese, which was anything like standard. The output of the Whitchurch farmhouse cheese industry reached a peak in 1927, when 1,600 tonnes was pitched over the year at Whitchurch Cheese Fair. That variability that Dennis referred to contributed to the subsequent decline. There was a major change in the 1930s. It was rather nice. John Hughes is a retired ministry scientist who worked in the Cheshire cheese industry during the second half of the last century. Well, they established the Milk Marketing Board, a cooperation of farmers with the government, and the Milk Marketing Board made an offer that every dairy farmer could supply milk as long as it was clean and of good quality. They would take the milk, they would purchase it, and uh, at the end of the month, the farmer would get a check for the milk he'd sold. Well, this, with the, with the, with the difficulties, the hard work, and the, 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 sometimes they had a poor reward because of the indifferent quality. Farmers said, oh, this is good. And they decided to stop making cheese and they sold their milk to the milk marketing board. That decimated the cheese. In the Second World War, uh, cheese making uh, was stopped by the government because they thought the liquid milk was more precious. After the Second World War, about 60 people started up again making the um, uh, the uh, cheese. They continued the cheese making and then they got hit again in foot and mouth and uh, the herds were again uh, virtually all the cheese makers lost their, uh, their herds and again they couldn't make so they, that was another knock. And then after that was um, overcome uh, a few the braves decided to start again and about 30 set up again making cheese Today, only a handful of farms around Whitchurch are still making cheese from their own milk. The volume industry is being carried forward by one large-scale producer, buying milk from a large number of farms and supplying cheese to retail multiple outlets.